So today I thought I'd run through the workflow process that I use when it comes to creating client content or my YouTube videos. The PC uh, that I'm using is eight years old, so it is a bit long in the tooth and it doesn't deal with 4K amazingly well. But personally, I think that's all workflow related issues and there are a lot that you can do when it comes to that, that you can actually help your rig out. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the actual folder structure that I use for my clients and my YouTube videos. And this is just on an external hard drive whereby all the editing is done. Now it's not an SSD, but that's something I need to upgrade to. Now, once I've done recording like I'm doing today, everything will go in the folder structure so all the audio source is segmented into the different sources of audio that's being captured and we have an original source then and that is for the video so the three cameras the two g7s and the gh5 which is what we're recording on today now all the original files will go in those locations and the reason being is, is that I have a separate location for where I transcode the footage. I never work with the footage that comes out of the camera. I always transcode that from MP4, which is the H.264 format, into DNxHR. And the reason for that is, is that whilst the, the compression is great for recording, it's an absolute pain in the ass for editing. And I was finding that before I was doing this, I was getting not so much playback, but I was getting random crashes. I was getting issues where certain effects were just not working properly. But by doing that, I found that the, the actual editing experience was much, much better. Now, the first thing that you are going to want to do is to actually convert that footage. And like I said, I was using the transcode method in DaVinci Resolve to convert those to DNX, uh, H2, uh, not DNX, uh, to DNX HR. Now, I was using the transcode method, boom, 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 all media. And I was going to video, so you just select where this needs to go. And then I was doing DNX HR because the camera's 10 bit. I didn't need for it to be 444 10 bit so i'll just go with the h uh, hqx 10 bit now as you can see this is currently 8 gig and it's going to create the new file size as 34 gig so you have to be prepared to work with larger files and this is especially prevalent if you're working with 6k or 12k files that's going to be massive because they are now uncompressed files which makes it easier for the DaVinci Resolve or any editing software to read because it doesn't need to decompress it in order to show the frame and then recompress it. It's, it's a lot easier on the system so I'm much happier to work with the larger file sizes in the safe knowledge that it's just going to edit and render better. Now obviously that's going to take a little bit of time and I think usually that will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Depends on how long, well how large the actual end result is going to be. Now, part of the process that I was having difficulty with is the last 20%. Now, a lot of the work needs to come from a lot of the prep, and I will show you more prep that you can do, but this is in particular to the actual transcoding part, so we'll tackle this now. In the last 20%, once the, the main edit was finished and then I started to color grade and then do um, add any effects like text effects or anything like that, the noise reduction was killing the PC. It, it was just absolutely killing it and the playback was terrible. So what we've got here is two files. Now, let me go to the original and just get that and reset that so this is the original mp4 file as you can see up here 
this is we've got it set to the 4k resolution so that is at 4k so it's natively playing back and we're not putting on any proxies so it's going to play back as raw as it can now this will play back roughly at 24 so that's smooth but the problem comes with this if I start adding, say for instance I've done the edit and I start adding effects in my base effects, these are the, the three heaviest that I've got that will kill the grid. So I always add noise reduction, I add halation because that is it's a nice way to make it a little bit rustic and I also add in a little bit of uh, film grain in with that and then I, ha I add the soft light effect I just like what it does to the overall image but these are not heavy effects well the soft light isn't heavy but the other two these are killer now if we go back and play that we can see we are barely getting three frames a second now, this is just a small file. I think it's a little bit longer than 60 seconds, or it's actually uh, dead on a minute. But that just goes to prove that the effect of having that in it. Now, normally when I set up a project, I usually have the timeline proxy to half resolution, and I have this set to 19. And that's normally how I do my editing. So if we press play. So that is now playing smoothly, even with the effects on. But what I want to do is be able to mitigate having to do with this at the render, because whilst this is now playing fine for, rend uh, for editing, which is great, what it's not going to do is solve the issue when it comes to actually rendering out the Porsche file as well because in order to get it out of the 4K we've got to set it back to the 4K timeline in order for the deliver options to allow us to do that. So then we're back to the point of your machine has to render it in its full unrestricted 4K as is so what i done was because i'm already transcoding the image from mp4 to dnx hr i thought right okay how about i do some of the heavy lifting in with the noise reduction halation and soft light render that out as my master file and do it that way so that is what we have done here now this now the test file is the result of me rendering out and that is the file with the noise reduction the halation with the grain and the soft glow and the playback let it catch up much better and that is at the 4k with no proxy on and everything so that means you have a base file which is in a very good state to edit from and render and you don't have to worry about further down the line of it causing massive issues if you have multiple effects which all conflict with each other and cause a massive strain in your system causing crashes or extreme delays in the rendering time now just to prove this this was the original file where i rendered it out to create the master file for the three effects now that was a 60 second file and it just took under 10 minutes rendering that same file with all the files baked in it took a minute and 38 so that is a massive improvement and i would see further improvements if i worked off an ssd drive so that's by the by that's something i've got to do now we've already reduced the load there now you might be saying why well, i don't want to bake in halation or soft glow that's fine you can bake in the noise reduction and what you can do is later on down the line 
if we put the do 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 so these the effects i'm just going to disable this for the time being so then what you can do is you think right okay i've already got the file with everything baked in i've generated it but i want to add some soft light now we know that we want to improve the performance so we cache it and we right click and then we say node cache on and then that's going to cache and then see this red bar that's going to cache it now the detail at which it caches it at is in this little cog here and down the bottom i've got my render cache format set to high quality and you'll be thinking well why do you want to do that because if i render it out at high quality or even standard quality what it means is that when it comes to doing the deliver if i go to advanced settings i can switch this on and say use optimized media which will improve that again so you can do it that way the whole reason why i've been doing it this way is that if I've delivered the project to the client, I tend to go through a process whereby I clean down the cache, I move the files off onto another external hard drive for backup so that I can use this drive then as my continuing, uh, continuing drive to do other work for other clients. If a client has decided that they want to make some changes after the fact has been delivered, say for instance it's been a month or two, and they say, look, we want to pay you to make some changes. Can you do that? Because you've already done the heavy lifting with the noise reduction, you can copy it back without any issue. So you don't have to go through that burden of it being two hours every time a client requests a revision. Now, as you can see, it's caching in the background at the higher quality. So when the project comes back in, you will have to wait for that to cache. So the more you can do to the file upfront, this is why I add like the soft glow and um, the different things uh, that I know that I add on a regular basis in the transcode, the first file to generate that master file, it makes it much easier on the system and on me time-wise later on down the line. Now what you need to remember is that I've got these set up to my ways of working and I'm this is something I'm trying out so to make things easier on the system when you create a project it will normally or what I'll normally do is not in 4k I will edit the project in 1020 by 1080 that will re-render so whenever you set up a project and you've done the initial transcode, make sure that you are, before you have done any editing, make sure you are setting things up right. So I will set this up for 1020. I will make sure that this setting with the, the proxy media and everything is as I want it. And the reason why I've got that is that if I know I'm going to be working on a big project, this will make the playback a lot smoother by setting it to the 1020, uh, the 1920, sorry. Now that I have this set in here, proxy media, I can either do it to half. I can right click and I can say generate proxy media that will generate smaller files for the PC to be able to play and edit against. And then in the playback, you say use proxy media if available or use optimized. They both, I've, I've said it wrong, but there's the proxy media and there's the optimized media if available. So we're caching. So this is going to become the optimized media for that node. We haven't generated a proxy media yet for that but because we have set it to 1020 let's just put you back on the noise reduction and that's something you have to be careful of 
and this is what the other thing so i'm going to apologize this is a little bit random today but that was a, a, a good way of, of showing it. The node structure is highly dependent on what comes before it. So if you've got something cached here and you change something here, that has effectively changed the chain. So then this has to then recache. And that is what is happening here. So you've got to wait for then to that to recache for it to play back as smooth as you want. And then we come back then to the, the delivering. So if you are delivering this in 4K, what I tend to do is that I tend to export it as DNXHR, the 10 bit. And then because this is set to my timeline resolution of 1920, you've got to change that. And then that will change back to the maximum resolution. So that's the what you want. I make sure that the color space tag and the gamma tag are both Rec7 and Rec709A, just to make sure that it plays okay across all different um, via different devices the same way uh, with the gamma and the color and all that type of jazz. Come on now. When you change the resolution, you change the cache. So be mindful every time you do something. So once you've done the editing in 1920 by 1080, and then you come to deliver it and you change that resolution, you have to wait until the cache is done if you're going to use optimized media. So there is a trade-off. So you, at some point you're going to have to wait. So having a faster machine will make this process faster. But in my case, as you can see, it is relatively slow. So that is why I'm doing the heavy lifting first. So that these three effects, as you saw, I'm gonna turn that off. So that's not going to render anymore and we're going to play that with all the effects on and it's relatively crap as opposed to that which is once it catches up it's struggling a bit because i'm recording but it's much much better and that's the point i'm trying to drive home it then means that on this, I can continue then to do a grid should I want to like a cross process or earthy or I'll just go for the vibrant and then we'll append that and then that goes then against my grid. So there's a base grid and I can play that much much smoother and it has the noise reduction and the halation and everything that I want from it so I'm finding that a much easier way to to do it and the reason being is is that I tried this method with the last video that I've done so we're going to switch to project and it's the small camera setup so for this I originally did the file, uh, the project using the old method, and it wasn't complicated. As you can see, it's not a massive file structure. Now, these were on different levels, but I flattened the file structure to make sure that it wasn't rendering anything. It didn't need to. When I originally did the project, this is a 12 minute video, that took two hours and five minutes, just for argument's sake. When I re-rendered those original files and I applied the noise reduction and the halation with the, the basic grain and the soft glow as my primary master files and then I switched those out and used them in here, I re-rendered the project just to see what would happen and this came down to 19 minutes and 56. So it's a massive saving. It might be even faster with an SSD and a better graphics card. It'll probably fly through. But the workflow improvement has made 
a massive difference to an eight year old PC. Now, this PC itself has got three gig of graphics and it's got 32 gig of uh, RAM and it's a, an i7 processor from eight years ago. So that is just to give context of what we're editing on. But as you can see, this is not what I would consider a crazy edit. And yet, it has managed to save a lot of time. So with this particular video, I made a few mistakes to the sound and I had to re-render and re-upload that to YouTube. Um, frustrating as it was, but I made a few mistakes and I noticed it and I wasn't happy, so I re-rendered it. That was four hours because I hadn't tried this yet. Four hours of my time as opposed to 40 minutes that's that's a massive saving on your day and it's a massive improvement in your workflow so for me it's worth it because you could be in that same position with a client where you deliver something and either the client wants something additionally included or you've accidentally messed up and you've got to re-render it that right there is proof in the pudding that it will make it much easier to deliver that content with confidence and that is it that is my workflow now what i tend to do is after the fact i tend to use handbrake to compress the video to h265 at a different resolution if i need to and then that will make the file size smaller for me to put up to youtube so it's not going to take as long but i always like to have that master file so that i can do what i want with it later on with handbrake whether it's to reduce the resolution or keep the quality or vice versa it, it, it makes it much easier for me and I can just do what I want and that is it so fingers crossed you like this content sorry it was a, a bit not so much all over the place but I haven't scripted this I thought I'd do it off the cuff to see how it went and yeah so if you like the content please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one cheers